Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls on film. Girls on film. Do you guys remember that song? The fucking girls on film. Girls! I don't know why. Why do I remember that song? Wasn't that song from like the 80s or the... Or the 90s? Girls on... Why do I know that song? Because I wasn't fucking existing. Sorry if you can hear the rain. Uh, it's, uh, it's just raining here. Um, girls on... What's that from? Oh, I know, I know where I know that from. Fucking, uh, when I, when I would play, uh, what's, what's the game? Grand Theft Auto Vice City. That's what I, when I sing girls on film, I just picture myself driving on the footpath, plowing down like all of these pedestrians, which is what I used to do in, uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And not what I will do when I get my license. <laughs> um, welcome to the Spear Sundays podcast. This is episode 100 and, um, 118, I suppose. Um, I'm recording this one on a Saturday, so hopefully you cunts will get it up on Saturday night if you're a Patreon dude or, or dude it Or girls on Patreon. <laughs> girls on Patreon. If you're one of those cunts, you get it Saturday night. Otherwise, everyone else, uh, Sunday. How you been, huh? Oh, I'm back. I'm back into the real world. And I guess, I was, if you don't know, I've been on a cruise for the last 10 days. I've been on a giant fucking boat. And someone, I said, I called the cruise a boat. And someone in the comment section said, Oh, it's not a boat. Oh, isn't it? Is a cruise ship not a boat? Excuse me. You know what they are? Those are the same fucking cunts that are like, Oh... A Lamborghini's not a car, man. It's a supercar. Oh, really? Does it have four wheels and a driver's... And a fu- four wheels and a place for you to put your... Does it go forwards and backwards and have four wheels and an engine? It's a car. Alright? I don't care how big the fucking boat is. It's a boat. Oh, hang on. Let me turn on the light so I look a little bit, a little bit more pretty for those video cunts. Oh, you guys are a little bit better, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fucking boat, man. Actually, I'm going to move this even closer. Sorry if this is ruining your headphone experience. Yeah, it's a it's a boat. It's not a fucking... It, it is a cruise ship, but it's mainly a boat. You know what I mean? Like, being, man, being on a cruise, it's, it's like a giant fucking floating retirement home. Full of just cunts trying to escape their life and ignore their problems. You know what I couldn't believe? In being on the cruise ship is how much people gambled. Like, dude, I've never seen anything like. When I first got on the ship, right, I'm like, okay, cool. There's a there's a couple of pools. There's a, a spa. There's a massage place. There's uh, fucking lawn bowls for some reason. Even though there's no lawn, they just put hey, there's fucking lawn bowls on a on a ship that rocks. So fuck your game. There's like live performances for free. There's like four different restaurants you can choose from for free. There's a couple of paid ones as well. There's the view. There's the gym. There's a movie cinema. There's every single piece of entertainment you can think of. There's even TVs in your room. And I think consistently the most popular attraction was the fucking pokies in the middle of the ship, no windows. Who the fuck pays $2,000 to get on a boat and is like, you know what I'm going to do for the rest of my holiday? I'm going to sit in the middle of the boat where I can't see the amazing view and I'm going to waste money on the pokies. Like, I I felt like a piece of shit for watching uh, Spongebob when it came on the TV. Because I'm like, ah, I can watch Spongebob at home. I don't need to watch Spongebob on the boat. But something appealed to me about watching uh, a Sea Life inspired cartoon while on a fucking boat. For some reason, I was like, this this feels right. <laughs> I felt like a piece of shit for doing that. But at least I wasn't sitting uh, on the fucking Bricky's laptop just putting in money again and again. You know what? What happened was... um. How the money worked on this cruise ship, it's fucking sneaky, man. That whole place is a giant money trap that you don't even realize you're spending money. I don't drink, right? And that was the main thing that people did. It was people were fucking gambling or drinking. That were the, the main things people were doing. 
because I don't drink, I spent way less money than probably fucking every other person on the cruise that wasn't nine. But I still got off the cruise being like, fuck, I spent that much money? Like, I didn't spend heaps, but I didn't realize that I was spending it because how it worked, right, is there's no cash. You can't use cash and you can't use your fucking debit card. They give you like this little ID card on a lanyard, right? And you, it's like a, it's like a train ticket. You load that shit up or a gift card. So you load that shit up with your uh, debit card and then it connects to the card. And then so you pay with your ship cruise card and then it takes money off your debit card. So you can't actually see how much you're spending. Like, you know, when you spend money on your card, you've got your app on your phone and you look and you go, oh, I'm fucking, I'm an idiot. I'm going to stop spending. You can't see that on this little thing. So I frequently lost track of how much money I was spending. Not that I was spending heaps, I just like to know what I was fucking spending. And there was this point where I was lining up to the ATM because um, uh, I figured out I could put a limit on it. So I wanted to put a limit on the thing so I would know, oh, I'm, I'm going to spend this much amount of money over the 10 days. So that way I can't go over because I could see myself going over my holiday budget super easy. So I'm lining up to the ATM thing to do that. And then in front of me is this dude just fucking feeding this ATM thing hundreds and hundreds of dollars cash that he he withdrew from the ATM and then started feeding into like the cruise ship card machine. So I did the little, I did the the old uh, six foot eight unethical shoulder, shoulder look over to see the screen and he was fucking like $2,000 in the negative on his cruise ship card. And he put, I watched him put $3,000 in it and then go straight to the pokies. And that fucking blew my mind. Like, could you imagine spending $2,000 to go on the cruise and then coming back an extra $5,000 in the red because instead of enjoying all of the free entertainment and experiencing the travel and the views or even just staying in your fucking room and having a wank (laughs) you decided to sit on the pokies for 10 days crazy man and it was real I don't know I felt felt a bit dirty about it it was like um they had all these women. Like, I've never seen so many women playing the pokies. It's it like all these women were like, Oh, I can't gamble at home, but I'm on a cruise so I can have a flutter. Next thing you know, they flutter their whole fucking mortgage. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm, I'm back in real life now. And, oh, dude, I needed I needed the fucking break. I, didn't re- I, I do this every time. And by every time... This happens every time I have a holiday, and by every time, I mean this time, and then in 2015 when I went to Thailand for a week because my girlfriend forced me. I I just needed a break. I was like, fuck. You know what the best thing was? I just locked my phone in a safe. Got my phone, I put it in a fucking safe, and I didn't look at it for like 10 days, apart from when I wanted to upload the podcast, and um, it was... It was amazing. And it's made me go, you know what? I use my fucking phone too much in my uh, normal day life. So I've started using, trying to use it less. And it's just better. I don't, like, I'm not fucking checking shit. And with all of the social media profiles I have now, it's, it's endless. Checking, notifications, comments, subscribe, all that kind of shit can keep me endlessly entertained, stuck in this little loop of, oh, this person commented that, or oh, she liked this, and fucking all that stuff I've just stopped looking at it and I'm a lot uh, I don't know I just feel a lot better I feel more present in the fucking world um, and I also noticed that when we went on um, we went to because we went to all these different islands on this fucking cruise to destroy the native culture right turn their little island into a tourist shanty village <laughs> so uh, we got off at one place it was called uh uh, what was it called? Numea or something. Um, and it was like this French speaking, uh, 
Pacific island in New Caledonia, I think. Which basically just means there were a whole bunch of natives having a really nice time on an island and then the French people came and fucked up their whole life and was like, Hey guys, fuck your culture. You speak French now. Also, you use Franks. Which is like, what was French currency? And I think the funniest thing about these islands using Franks... Like, France doesn't even fucking use Franks anymore. They use the Euro, don't they? So here I was in some place in New Caledonia, fucking a million miles away from France, and there are all of these islanders speaking French and spending French money that France doesn't even use anymore. And it just made me go, that is like, <laughs> that's just the pinnacle of France just colonizing an island, using the fuck out of it, and then the moment that it stops being useful or profitable, they just fucked off they didn't they weren't even like oh by the way guys uh seeing as we're still looking after you we use the euro now so we think you guys should it's like no they st <laughs> still like ah let them use the fucking frank that's a good meme <laughs> fuck them we're not gonna see those guys ever again we took all of their whatever the fuck was there He's like, oh, slavery became illegal, so we'll just leave the cunts with all of our francs and fuck off. <laughs> but anyway, I was on this, this, this Numea joint, and uh, it was really nice, man. And, and, and no, the main thing that stuck out to me was no one was on their phone. And I, I might, I suspect that that could be because the whole island is too poor to own a phone. <laughs> But I found it quaint. <laughs> oh, look at these guys. They can't even afford a phone or fucking roads. Good on them. Look how much happier they are. My fucking... My fucking privileged perspective. Oh, look how happy the little natives are without their phone. Meanwhile, they're probably fucking dying in childbirth. Because they don't have painkillers in hospitals. But the, the what I'm trying to say is... It was so strange being around, like, a, it was a city, right, where everyone had cars, and everyone seemed to have jobs and shit, um, but no one was on their phone. And, uh, cunts were just walking around, talking to each other. You know when you saw that thing of, that, that fucking post that a 60 year old dude makes and be like, oh, these bloody phones are making kids antisocial. And then you're, you're like, yeah, if, as, yeah, but as if, if I didn't have a phone, I would just talk to strangers on the train. I think that's actually what does happen. If you take the phone away, strangers just start talking to each other. Because, I mean, that's what I saw in Numea. I mean, they're people, aren't they? So all these fucking dudes were just walking around speaking French to each other. I saw some, some guys playing soccer in the street. You don't see that shit anywhere. Soccer for no reason. So it made me, made me kind of go, you know what, I'm going to use my phone less. I'm going to try and... Because I, I, I think I was like tricking myself into thinking, oh yeah, I, my phone is work for me because social media is work. So I would just be scrolling through and watching fucking dog videos and tricking myself into thinking, oh, this, uh, this husky crying because it's having a shower. This video is definitely work. <laughs> I think I'll watch seven more. And it's like, dude, I'm wasting my life. Looking at that shit. It's either that shit or just horrible news. Um, which I actually do have to look at because I get a lot of material out of horrible news. <laughs> um, uh, but but yeah, it was it, it kind of inspired me to be like, uh, you know what, I'm gonna use my phone less, and I I have been using it less. It's only been a couple of days that I'm back on land, and uh, it's a, it's a lot better, man. Like I'm not fuck, I'm not checking it. Like when I walk, so often I would just pull my phone out and just fucking look. Oh, what's the time? Oh, a notification. Oh, who said this? Oh, a text message. I better respond to that. And then I would just be sit walking down the street, texting. 
or whenever I was whenever I'm on public transport, which is a lot because I'm a fucking piece of shit who can't drive at 24 years old. I would just be on my phone the whole time, and it was like it's shit. So I've started using it less, and I've started like carrying um, my Kindle, world's smallest library, fits right in your pocket. <laughs> World's largest library, sorry, fits right in your pocket. It's small, but it has a it has a large library. Guys, just buy a Kindle, get around it. Buy one, lose one, buy another, find them both. <laughs> I recommend it. So I've just been and I've been reading way more, and it's been it's been amazing. Like I'm I'm reading um, what did I read recently? Like over the cruise, I read like three hobby magazines that have been sitting on my fucking bedside table stressing me out because I got some subscription to White Dwarf which is like a Warhammer little painty miniature nerdy virgin no mate shit that I love and I got a subscription to this magazine and I fell behind a little bit because when I went to Adelaide Danny Philippou from Raka Raka bought me like 12 comic books without my permission. He's like, here you go, I just spent $500 on comic books for you. So I just took them home and I just sat them on my bedside table and it was this giant pile that was just fucking stressing me out. I was like, oh, I gotta read all of this shit. <laughs> it felt like a job. Which is just so me, man. Like, I, ca I can't even fucking enjoy my hobbies without being like, Oh, I gotta catch up, I gotta read as much as I can. Can't even read a fucking comic book without giving myself KPIs on how many pages a week need to be read. Dickhead. And then it's, I'm like, Oh, I'm not reading one of them a week. I'm, I'm falling behind. Um, there's something wrong with me, man. But it means you guys get a lot of content, so hey. So anyway, I read all these little fucking nerdy hobby magazines, and then I, um, I read, uh, Jordan Peterson's book, uh, 12, 12 ways to fucking, I don't know, the sound like Kermit, whatever, whatever it's fucking called, 12 rules for life, an antidote for chaos, that's what it is, um, just a book about how to, um, how to be a good human, and live life, uh, I suppose properly, if you agree with him, and um, it was an amazing book, man. It was really, really good. Uh, it wasn't preachy at all. It didn't really talk about too many opinions um, outside of uh, philosophy on how a, a human should live their life to make sure that not only are they getting the most out of it for themselves individually, but they're also not harming or impeding people around them and and I suppose the philosophy behind that is is if everyone does good for themselves without hurting others the world will just get so much better um, and it was really really interesting and I recommend reading that book if um, uh, if you're if, I don't know because I wasn't struggling I was just like oh I reckon I could probably do this better Whatever this fucking is, I reckon I could do it better for me and the people around me. So I, I read I read this book because I I always liked whenever he talked about it on YouTube and I and like just shit of oh this is how you you chase your dream and this is how you be a nice person and this is how you be a a, a healthy male instead of you know being ashamed of it or or going too far the other way and and being one of those fucking things who are so. Uh, either either so masculine that they just punch cunts and hate women or or so the other way that they're just oh I'm so sorry for being a man I was like you know what's the what's the healthy fucking middle for that um, and I always I always uh, in, enjoyed his video stuff so I read the book and it was amazing man it was like super I don't know it just fit in with with my brain of like oh yeah that that makes sense and it's it felt totally applicable so I'm trying to I don't know, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, like, fucking fix up my personal life. Not that anything's broken with it, but I'm just trying to make it better, uh, to become a good cunt. I mean, I'm still a fucking asshole, <laughs> but I'd like to be an efficient asshole. That's, that's basically what I'm trying to work out. So, yeah, I mean, I, I read that book, and now I'm, like, halfway through American Psycho. 
And that's literally just from... Uh, that's heaps of reading done in about 12 days. And that's just from when I'm traveling, instead of looking at my phone, I pull out a book and I read something productive that'll help me instead of looking at the fucking 17 reasons why this Marvel character is more powerful than Superman. Like, that pointless shit. Um, so I've started doing that, and I've read, like, one and a half books in about two weeks. Uh, and that's just from, yeah, cutting out reading while I'm traveling. Uh, I mean, using my phone while I'm traveling and replacing that with reading. And then also at night time, instead of lying in my bed, staring at a fucking illuminated screen until three in the morning, because you can't go to sleep with light in your eyes, I just changed that to a book. Uh, and now I sleep better and I'm reading more and I, I don't know, I feel, I feel better because I'm not reading about horrible news every fucking day. <clears throat> what else did I want to talk about today? Um, cruise, real life, phone less. Oh yeah! Now that I'm back in real life, I'm back to this fucking shithole, this warehouse that I'm in and the, of, of course, as soon as I leave, everything just goes wrong. I'm away for 10 days. Can you guess what happened? It fucking flooded. <laughs> the whole warehouse fucking flooded. There's a hole in the roof. And then it went down onto my carpet that I just bought. Soaked it all the way through. Fucked up everything that was on the floor. Thank the Lord all of my lights and camera shit is on tripods and, and the cables are suspended from the walls because I thought this might happen. But all the carpets fucked up and a whole bunch of stuff that was on the floor and cleaning shit and cardboard boxes just ruined. And then there's a hole, another hole on the side of the roof where the, where it, wherever the leaves go, it goes through that hole and then the whole place is just like full of wet leaves. I'm like, oh great, this is awesome. So I get back, I get back and, I'm, and I, I walk into just a fucking soggy leaf floor. I, I, it's like I walked into a fucking forest, man. And uh, I'm like, oh great. So I message the guy and I'm like, hey man, uh, can you come check out my warehouse? There's been a bunch of flooding. And he runs in and he's like, you're Louis. The, the place is owned by the, this, this Russian dude. He's like, oh, Louis. Uh, yes, I noticed it. I came in to do security while you were away. I, I noticed the, the flooding. Uh, uh, like, I, he, he knocks on the door. I open it, and I'm like, hey, man, there's... He goes, oh, Louis, okay. So I noticed while you were away that he just fucking goes. No, like, doesn't listen to me. He's just like, this is what's happening. Like, super efficient Russian dude. He goes, so I noticed... Uh, they're obviously leaking from the roof onto carpet. Uh, what we've done is uh, we're getting man into fixed roof. Uh, another way has flooded, so we're fixing that roof and this roof. Uh, so it's uh, uh, all. And I'm like, so uh, there's also like a whole bunch. He's like, yes. So it's all addressed. And I was like, yeah, but there's also like a hole in the roof, and I think leaves. He goes, yeah, yeah, all addressed. And I'm like, okay, and also the the, uh, the internet doesn't work yet. Yeah, all, all addressed. I'm all across this. I know all about it. All, all, all addressed. <laughs> he just kept telling me that it was all addressed. And I'm like, what's going on? And then he just left. I'm sitting here with my fucking ruined carpet that I paid money for. And you're like, oh. Oh, well, I, 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 I guess that's addressed. Does that mean that it's that it's fixed or it's getting fixed? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck's happening. So, I don't think I'm just going to take matters into my own hands and just get my, my dad in here, who's a carpenter, to just fix the roof from the inside. I don't, I don't know what the fuck's happening. But, um, the plus side is none of the camera gear is destroyed and, um, hopefully the carpet will dry because I can't afford to replace it. I could barely afford to buy it in the first place. So, I mean, hopefully that'll get fixed and... Mold won't grow, and then I'll, I won't get any fucking lung infections from trying to make videos for you dogs. <laughs> so, and that's what's been going on in my life. I've been trying to use my phone less to make my life better, but my life's fucking shit because of this place. <laughs> oh, but overall, very good. Um, what else do I want to say? Ah, oh, also, um... Wanted to uh, talk about the comedy special. So, um, 
a lot of people have been hitting me up. Obviously, yes, we are behind schedule. Uh, I was wanted, to, I was aiming to get it out in April or May. It is now the end of June, um, but the the special is done. It's finished. I've seen it. It's amazing. Uh, really happy with it, and uh, I've uh, I've written a release date on my calendar sometime next month. No promises at this period. But I feel very fucking confident that we're going to achieve it. Um, literally what's happening now is I'm organizing DVDs to be printed. Hoodies to be made up. Uh, all of the files to be exported to the different formats that we need. Like 4K, 1080p and then also for a cinema version and then an iTunes version. and All, all that kind of shit. Um, and also setting up the website, uh, my website to handle and facilitate all of the, the $5 downloads. Um, so I've, I've got a release date that I'm working towards. I'm not going to tell you it because I don't want to promise anything that I can't deliver on. But from what's happening now, I feel very confident that we're going to achieve it. But something could go wrong. Something could get delayed. Whatever. Um, but I feel very confident that we're going to hit it. And uh, as long as the files get up and the website's built in time and if DVDs are printed and so are hoodies, uh, I will be telling you the release date and making an announcement and revealing everything uh, fucking quite soon. But something could go wrong, something could get changed, something could be rearranged. But at the moment, it's everything's on track. Dis well, two months late on track. Uh, and it's looking like uh, you guys will be knowing a lot more and seeing a lot more quite soon. That's all I'm going to say, but I'm very fucking hyped. So get your five bucks ready, because uh, I think this is going to be going to be great. Um, all right, what else do I want to do? So uh, where are we? Uh, also, my tour is almost finished booking. Uh, that'll be going. That'll be happening in like September, October, uh, and probably going on sale in August, I think, is what I've got on the uh, the calendar. But um, again, don't correct me on that. Shit could change. The fucking... Uh, <laughs> a couple of the jokes from the comedy special could destroy my career. Who knows? <laughs> but we'll fucking see. All right? So, with that being said, uh, shall we get into miscellaneous bit at the fucking end? Uh, if you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. Worst part of any podcast. It's where... Uh, I answer questions sent in by you guys. If you'd like to send in uh, a question, if you need any life advice or help, or you've got any, uh, anything that you think I would enjoy reading, any cool stories, revenge stories, vandalism, I'm all about it. Uh, crazy shit that you can't tell anyone else. I'll keep you anonymous if you want me to. Send an email to podcast at lewspears.com and uh, I'll do my best to give you some advice or just laugh at your fucking mistake. Uh, let me log in here. I can never talk and type my password, man. Uh, no. Fucking mobile internet. I'm running through so much data being in here. Alright. Um, Alright. Where are we? Okay. What's happening? Uh, oh, no. Read that one. Alright, I think I'm going to do... Uh, accused of perving, but I didn't. I swear on my Lewis Spears merch. <laughs> okay. Hey, cunt. I love your shit. Can't wait for the special. <coughs> Sorry. Hey, cunt. Love your shit. Can't wait for the special. Should be lit. Call me Flynn. What a fucking shit name. Uh, Sorry. Uh, so at school we <laughs> so at school we had a senior school play uh, for people from year ten to twelve, <coughs> and for some stupid fucking reason, the boys and the girls all change in the same room. That's just are, are they stupid? Getting a whole bunch of sixteen to eighteen year old virgins in the same room, taking their clothes off, are they dumb? What the fuck? That sounds like some Catholic school shit. I mean, the only thing you really need to make that a real private boys' school experience is to have the teachers changing in the same room as well. The boys and the girls change in the same room. 
I was standing around with some friends having a good old chat <coughs> about random shit and one of the girls goes, yo boys, I'm changing so don't look. So I turned away. The next day, I get called into the drama teacher's office and she tells me that someone had come and said that I was perving on them. I did not. I told her and she believed me. I thought that was going to be the end of it, but fuck, this is the beginning. I recently found out she went and told her friends what had happened and then her friends spread it even more and now pretty much everyone in year 11 and 12 know everything from her side and think I'm a pervert. I've lost friends because of this fucked up situation and I'm coming to you for advice. What should I do? Should I take some sort of Nebs Adlai level revenge or deal with it like a functioning member of society? Ah, two very appealing options. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, that sounds really shit, man, but I think your main problem is that you called Flynn. <laughs> <coughs> um, I don't know, man. That's, uh, <clears throat> I mean, what can you do? Sound, it, it's, uh, if you are to be believed and you definitely didn't perv on her I mean we're at the fucking we're at the point in the world where no matter what you say she's probably going to get believed because um, that's just how it's going at the moment where you believe everyone no matter the evidence because hashtag I believe you or some shit um, <clears throat> but yeah, fuck. I don't know, man. I think that uh, it'll probably blow over, if I'm being honest with you. Like, yeah, that sucks that that's happened and they've said that, but I suppose all you can really do is just cop it, s always say, no, I never did that. Uh, maybe talk to the girl who's, who's who you supposedly perved on and say, hey, I want to let you know that I definitely did not do that. I'm sorry if you thought that I did, but I didn't. Um, and is there anything that I can do to make this right? Um, and to make you believe me? Uh, because I feel like you're telling a lot of people something that isn't true. And uh, I don't think that's good because <clears throat> I'm losing friends on it. Maybe just be honest with the chick unless she's scared of you. If she's built up a thing where she's scared of you, um, then maybe just stay away from her and uh, try and deal with it. But I know talking to her might be a good idea. I think that anyone who's really your friend probably isn't going to believe that shit. Um, so pay attention to the people who stick with you because uh, those are your real mates. Everybody else, either if they believe it and it actually didn't happen, I'm answering this question on the basis that it did not happen. If it did happen you've made your own bed and you've got to fucking lie in it, deal with it. But if it didn't happen, uh, anyone who would be swayed to believe that probably didn't know you very well at all. I'm assuming you're not the type of person to do that because you didn't do it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I would, uh, unless she's scared of you for some reason, uh, I would talk to her and maybe try and work it out with her. Uh, otherwise... It might just be something that you have to deal with that'll probably blow over in, in, in like fucking two months when someone gives a gives a blowjob to someone behind the school shed or some shit. And that becomes the next thing to talk about. Alright? <clears throat> Best of luck with that, man. And uh, I appreciate you swearing on my merchandise. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, oh, what the fuck is this? Condition... My... My laptop, the charger has a red light, and the battery has a warning thing on it, and I click on it, and it says condition replace soon. You're fucking kidding me, man. View your battery's condition normal, replace soon. The battery is functioning normally, but holds less, less charge than it did when it was new. Fuck, man. This everything to do with app. I'm gonna have to go to the blue shirt cunt store. I'm fucking sick of that joint. I think it's the red shirt cunt store now. They're all wearing red shirts or something. Oh, man. I hate... As good as Apple is, I fucking hate them so much. When did I get this laptop? Oh, uh, I suppose I got it a while ago. Did I? I think I only got it like two years ago and now it's fucking dying. That sucks, man. And I, I bet... If I take this to the fucking blue shirt cunt store and be like, Hey, 
One battery replacement, please. They'll be like, sure, no worries, we can do that for you. It's just $5,000, or you could spend $4,000 and get a new laptop. Either way, it's a fucking bargain. I bet if I try and replace this battery, they're gonna, they're gonna just charge me so much money that it'll make more sense to get a new laptop. And that's how their business works. And I hate that it'll work on me, but it probably fucking will. I hate... Why doesn't shit just work? And you know what else? My phone is dying too. I got my phone even earlier before I got my laptop. <coughs> And now this one's on its... Oh, no, after... I got my phone after my laptop and it's dying too. This thing's on its way out as well. Fucking hell, man. Why can't people make shit that just works? <clears throat> like, my camera works. And the batteries are like 30 bucks. Why can't you just do that with a laptop? Uh, you know what? They can do that with a laptop. They just don't. Because they're like, oh, you know... We could give people uh, a product that they can service themselves and uh, responsibly repair uh, on the cheap or even pay a professional to repair it for much cheaper than they would uh, to buy a new version. Or we could destroy the planet by building things that we know are going to break so that they buy them again. And it all ends up in a landfill and then stuck down a turtle's neck. Fucking... <clears throat> That's another thing I'm trying to do more as well, ever since coming on this cruise, man. I'm trying to use less... Use less shit. You know, like, I survived for ten days with a couple changes of clothes and, like, four books and no phone. <clears throat> and I was fine. I didn't need fucking takeaway or just... Lollies or all that kind of plastic shit or bottles of water or, or like, coffee cups or none of that shit. I feel I'm gonna try and use less stuff just because I don't know I feel like I was I was thinking about it like how much rubbish just me me by myself produces in like a week if I don't monitor it like if I just let myself live and I go oh, I'll get that and I'll get one of these and how about that you use so much shit like even um even coffee cups I only get one a day a coffee a day, and that's like not that much compared to a lot. It's like some people get two or three out of coffee drinkers. Like I know some people get none, but I get one a day. But that's like one cup and one lid, and the cups are not recyclable, and neither are the lids. And I'm like, fuck, if I'm getting one of these every day, and I've been doing that for like two years, I think, that's like just almost 700 cups just fucking somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, those cups are still out there. They haven't degraded. They're not paper. They're plastic. They're just somewhere now. Just for fucking ever. Those 700 cups are going to outlive me by like a thousand years. And they're just somewhere. Like, those fucking 700 cups are going to live longer than any joke I write, no matter how good it is. I could become the next Bill Hicks, and those fucking cups would last longer than anything I ever do. Or anything any of my children do. If they're ten times more successful... If I become Bill Hicks, and then my son becomes Bill Hicks times ten, those coffee cups are still going to last longer than my son who is Bill Hicks times ten. That, that's my real legacy, is those 700 cups are just fucking somewhere... I don't know where they are. Look, I, I put them in the bin... That made me feel good, but where the fuck did they go? They get taken to the tip. Oh yeah, and then what happens? It just sits there forever? And that's where, that's where they are now. They're just in a fucking hole forever. Forever! Those cups are just sitting there. That's my legacy. 700 jumbo sized cups that I had to say jumbo. Every time I fucking ordered it, like a nine-year-old. Can I get a jumbo cup? That's my legacy, guys. 700 fucking jumbo cups. That's what I'm leaving behind. It's 700 jumbo cups and 35 KFCs. Oh man, that Lewis Spears guy is a pretty good comedian, but did you know he owned like nine Mad Mexes? Oh, really? Yeah, and two Subways as well. Oh, fuck. What are those 700 jumbo-sized cups? Oh, they're Lewis's cups. 
I know he died in fucking 900 years ago, but his cups are still around. As well as... As well as his two fucking schnitzes. And one McDonald's. <laughs> That's why I'm leaving. Can he, did he have any good jokes? I don't know, man. They were all on the internet. We don't use that anymore. So I guess they're kind of lost, eh? Oh. Well, at least we've got his jumbo cups. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. So I'm going to try and use... <clears throat> as much as I hate to be that fucking wanker, I'm going to start using keep cups. Because I don't know. I, 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 look at the, I look at the guy with the keep cup and I'm like, you're a fucking wanker. But then I look at me with my jumbo fucking plastic cup and I'm like, I'm uh, I'm not a wanker, but I'm destroying the fucking planet. I think I'd rather just have a wank. <laughs> Be one of those guys. But I'm not going to become a cyclist. No way. Bro, you know what happened to me when I got on the fucking bus? Oh man. I was going to end the podcast, but I just remembered what's happened to me the last two times I've got the bus. I hate the, I hate the fucking bus. I realized that I had to get the bus to the warehouse. Because trains in Melbourne are great. I actually like the train. Because I can read, I can listen to music. They're not packed. They're like nice if you travel in the day. At night they're fucked, but I don't go out unless I'm doing stand-up. So they're fine. Uh, but during the day, they're actually kind of nice, depending on what line you're on anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I don't mind the train, but the, oh, the bus, man. I was like, oh, I don't need to get my license because I get the train everywhere. And I kind of like the train and it's actually, I, I actually wouldn't save any more time by getting a license. I just have to pay for insurance and petrol and find parking. A train's just easier. I can do trains, but the, but the moment, man. The moment I found out that I had to get the get one bus for 10 minutes from my house to the warehouse in a straight line down one road, I was like, no, I hate the bus, I need my fucking license. And I booked a driver's lesson. I got a driver's lesson next week. I took the bus twice and two horrible things happened to me. This is what happened when the, the first time I took the bus. I get on the bus. It's like, I left, left the warehouse really late, walked past the brothel, stood at the bus stop, got on the bus, like 9pm at night. I walk, I go straight to the back of the bus, like I'm fucking the anti-Rosa Parks. <laughs> straight to the back. And I sit there, and I walk past this nine-year-old kid. Nine years old. And he's a lad. He's got a little fucking bum bag, he's got a little cap that's tipped up way too high. Dude looks like a fucking pelican. He's got a little polo shirt that he probably got at an op shop. Nine years old. I walk past him. He's with two girls around his age. And he just goes, Oi, bro! And I'm wearing this jacket, right? This polo spray thing that I got fucking three, three, four years ago. Everyone's like, oh, nice jacket, man. Man, you would have spent so much money on it. It's like, not really. If I've been wearing it for four years, even though it was like, a, it, it was kind of an expensive jacket, but I've been wearing it for fucking four years. I bought this so I didn't have to ever buy a jacket ever again. And I can't buy a jacket because I'm down to jeans money anyway. So I'm stuck with this fucking jacket I got four years ago. And then underneath it, this jacket that I got like a fucking eight months ago. Because now I'm on jeans money. I don't need any fucking jeans. Anyway, so he goes, Oi, bro. Have you got a cigarette? Nine. Nine years old. And I didn't know what to say. Because he was fucking nine. So I was like, Oh, no, sorry, man. I don't smoke. That's what I said. Sorry, man. I don't smoke. Like, I know you're nine years old. But, if I, but unfortunately, I do not smoke. However, if I did smoke cigarettes, of course... I would give a dowry to a nine-year-old child. Why did I say that? I should have said, I should have said, yes, I have one, but no, you can't have one, because you're nine, all right? And if you start smoking at nine, it'll be fucking heroin at 12. Sorry, mate, no. Nine years old. And he goes, okay, bros. And he goes, oh, a fucking fresh polo jacket, man. Where'd you get it? 
And I was like, oh, Maya in 2013? He's like, oh, sick, Bryce, did you rack it? No, I didn't fucking rack it. I didn't steal a jacket from Maya like some kind of fucking 16 year old pleb showing off to his mates. Oi, bro, I fucking dat this, man. I know it's still got the ink tag on it, so when I pull that off, it'll fucking ruin it. But haha, <laughs> the beepers went off and I ran away from security. I'm fucking sick, man. No, I didn't do that. I went in, I worked in a fucking call center, and I hated my life, and it was cold as fuck. And I was like, you know what will make me a little bit happy, but still very depressed? A nice fucking jacket. And I bought it, and it didn't make me any happier. <laughs> Maybe I should have stole it. At least then I would have had a sense of achievement rather than being like, oh wow, great. I spent like half of my week's pay on this fucking jacket and I feel nothing. Um, but... I'm pretty happy with it. I think I look nice in it. I, I got to. I filmed that lad, that, that lads in Frankston video in this jacket because you look like a fucking dickhead when you do it all the way up. Um, that was the first time I took a bus, and the 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 next. Actually, I've taken heaps of buses, but last night, man, this is what happened to me last fucking night when I got on the bus, and I'm still feeling the effects of this. I think I have a mark on my fucking. Oh, ow. I've got a fucking bruise from this shit. This is the last time I took a bus, right? I leave here again. 9pm. I walk past the brothel. I, oh, I saw someone come out of the brothel. That was ama- That made my whole night. I walked past the brothel and this dude drove out. And he it was obviously a customer. And we made eye contact. And fuck, he looked sheepish. I was like, ah, you just paid for a route, you cheeky bastard. And he was like, oh, you know, I just, no... Oh. I hope you're not a private investigator. You drove away. So, 9pm, I leave the warehouse, walk past the brothel, wait at the bus stop. And uh, the bus pulls up, and I'm wearing headphones, listening to music, listen to a little bit of NBA Young Boy. <laughs> like the fucking gangster I am. NBA Young Boy, never broke again. Oh man, I listen to some garbage music at the moment. Fuck, I like it. Auto-tune rap, I'm all about it. <clears throat> anyway, so I get on the bus, and I, I, I wave to the bus driver, and he's like, yeah, and how my, how my bus works, right, is where I take it from, the next stop is like a, sw- a, a bus depot, and it's like a shift change. So I get on the bus, and then the next stop, the bus driver gets off and switches with a new bus driver. So I'm at the shift change stop. So I get on the bus and I, I wave to the bus driver and he goes, Hey man, and um, and I fair evade because, I don't know, because I'm not paying for a bus ticket. That's why. I, because I don't want to. I don't want to pay for the fucking bus. They never ask me. There's never ticket inspectors on it. I, I, it's not so much about the money. It's just that I can't be fucked pulling it out of my zippy purse and touching it on while the bus is still moving. 50% of the time when I get it out to touch it on, they say, don't worry about it anyway. So I fear of it, right? Like a normal, <laughs> like a normal contributing member, member of society. I pay for my trains, but I fear of the bus. That's how it works in Melbourne, right? No one pays for the bus. You pay for the train, you fuck the bus. So I fear of it. And I've got my headphones on, I don't have, I can't hear anything. And then I, I get on the bus, and it's like the bus driver's last stop. So I step, I take three steps, and... Vroom, he fucking slams the accelerator. Like, fucking floors it. And I go... It would have been the funniest shit, man. There was like five people on the bus, and I know they fucking laughed, because I would have pissed myself. So I'm facing away from the bus driver. He, I, I'm trying to sit down, like in, um, how, how it works as the, as the bus is, there's like a bunch of seats that face the front of the bus, but then before them, it's like the, the seats that are on the side of the bus for like people that are, that are in wheelchairs or whatever. So I'm like, oh, I'm just going to sit in the fucking wheelchair thing because there's no one on this bus anyway, and that's the closest seat. I'm tired. 
So I go to sit down on the side thing. So as I'm lowering my ass down to sit on that, he fucking slams the accelerator. I lose my balance and I go flying fucking towards the back of the bus. I smash my forehead into the fucking seat. Straight into the fucking seat. I'm trying to catch myself, but the seats are like those fold up and down ones. So I go to grab it, but I... I, I underestimate, I forget that it moves, so I grab it, it moves down, and I just go head over ass, forehead first, straight into the fucking bus seat. It hurt like fuck, it hurt so much, it really hurt my head. I just smashed my face straight into the back of a bus seat, in front of everyone on the bus. And I know the bus driver did that shit on purpose. Because I'm fucking falling over, and then 10 seconds after that, he stops the bus, and he gets off really quick, pissing himself. Fucking dog. He did that shit on purpose, man. He's like, oh, look at this tall dickhead fair evading. I'm going to make him face plant it straight into the fucking seat. And I did. He fucking got me. And I've, I've got a lump on my fucking head. That dog. But you know what? I deserved it for listening to NBA Young Boy. Fucking. You know what? Never bus again. Never bus again, Young Boy. That's my new fucking name. No way. Never bus again, Long Boy. That's gonna. That's my new rap name. Fuck Christopher Ruse. It's Never Bus Again, Long Boy. Fuck my head hurts, man. I got. I've had a headache all day. It pushed my. Uh, I, I, it was like I landed on my head. Because I tried to grab the seat and then it moved. So it was just like... <laughs> it was... <laughs> you ever seen those parkour videos where they put their hands on the ledge and then propel their legs through their... in between their arms? And they kind of catapult themselves forward? Kind of like how, how a dog runs, right? They, their two front feet go backwards and their two... Back feet go forwards. I did that, but instead of my legs going forwards, my fucking head did. So it was like I pulled my head straight into the seat. Oh, dude, it fucking hurt. Like, it hurt so much. And the bus driver pissed himself, just got off the bus and switched. I couldn't even yell at the guy. Not that I would. I wouldn't yell at anyone working on a bus. But I wanted to be like, hey, man, can you, can you next time just wait until I'm sitting? That sucked. Ah, he fucking catapulted me in the seat. It sucked. And then I was like, and I, I was, and the whole way, whole way home, I was so fucking mad. I couldn't even listen to NBA Young Boy. <laughs> I was just fucking fuming. Whole way home, I was like, I hate my life. I have to get the fucking bus, and I face plan it. It's not bad enough that I get the bus at 24. I also have to fucking ram my forehead into the fucking seat in front of everyone. So. I'm very excited to get my license and start this lesson. I've got a lesson booked for Tuesday. So next podcast, you guys are going to hear about my first driver's lesson. Can't believe I'm saying that 24. Actually, I can believe that. I've been putting this off for fucking six years. I was going to do another question, but I don't think we have time. Um, uh... That's going to be about the end of the podcast, guys. <clears throat> um, I, I do want to talk about one one thing. It's kind of serious. It's kind of sad. It doesn't have to do with me. Um, but uh, if you live in Australia, I'm sure you guys all heard about the uh, uh, what happened to one of the uh, the comedians uh, in the Melbourne scene. Uh, I'm going to give a, a quick little recap. This happened while I was away. Um, so I'm just kind of coming back to reality and coming to terms with it. Um... So what happened was uh, a uh, a young comedian uh, who who's in the scene and in the community here in Melbourne. She did a gig, and uh, then she walked home by herself, and uh, some fucking animal raped and murdered her. Uh, and it's awful. I don't have any words for it. It's fucking horrible. Um, 
I didn't know her very well. I think I met her once or twice, and I never really spoke to her. She seemed like a nice person, and, and from what I hear, she was a very good comedian. Uh, but that's not really the point, is my relationship with her. The, 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 uh, I suppose the point of what I'm saying here is that it's fucking horrible. Uh, I appreciate everyone reaching out to me to asking, asking if I was okay. I'm fine. It, it's, and it's, and I'm fine, and also, it's not about me. Um, I mean, I don't know, I've been thinking about, <clears throat> it's just so awful. It was like some 19 year old monster that, that just, we don't know much, but it seems random. He might've followed her home. It might've been a random thing where they cross paths or whatever it was that the result is this this poor girl was raped and murdered she was very young and um it's horrible um and it's it sparked like this conversation about you know about like you know men and women and and attitudes towards how men treat women and and you know of course the whole the victim blaming things come up where some people are like oh she shouldn't have been walking home at night and and it's like And in, in some pe some people are like, oh, sh she shouldn't be walking home at night. And some people are like, oh, you know, all men are responsible for this because we let this culture happen. And, and, and I feel, I think it's fucking horrible and it's awful that it happened and, and it should never, ever happen. Um, and I think women should be able to just walk home and go everywhere and do whatever the fuck they want without worrying about getting murdered and all that kind of shit, but unfortunately, unfortunately, the, that's, that's what's happening at the moment, uh, and, uh, I don't think, <clears throat> it's a difficult thing to talk about, especially because it's so recent, in, and it's about, you know, the community that I'm heavily involved with, and I, I, I think that, what needs, I suppose what needs to happen is, is just, I think men need to keep each other in check. And I know absolutely it is not all men. It's like a... And it's and it's getting smaller every fucking year. And yes, it happens to men and all this kind of stuff. But I feel like the best thing... Because I feel this shit. When you read something and, and, and everyone goes, Oh, fucking men need to, need to stop doing this to women. And, and you read that shit and you're like, But I'm not doing that. I, I, I don't do that. So if you don't do that, what, what can you do? You know, if you're not the type of person to be horrible to women and, and do shit like that, which vast, vast majority of people are, what do you do? And I've been thinking a lot about it. I, I think you just, if you're a good person, fucking man who would never do that to a woman as you should be um and as i hope everyone listening to this podcast is i think what we can do is just call it out if we see it even in like mild forms you know what i mean like i'm not talking about jokes but if you see a mate like being too touchy with a girl in a nightclub if he's drunk or if you see a mate cracking onto a girl who is who is obviously too drunk or, or on drugs and, and not in a position to consent. Or if you catch a mate talking in like a dangerous way about their partner or their mum or, or any women in, in, in general and it doesn't seem like a joke, I think you need to... We can say shit. Which I have done. When I feel like a mate's done something fucking horrible and I've, I've cut friends out of my life because I'm like I think that you're you're that type of person and I've told them and I'm like this is why I don't want to be friends with you and I'm, I'm out because of this shit um, and I think that that there's whenever anything like this happens and then the giant debate about how men treat women come up all of the good men are like oh but I don't do that Stop lecturing me. I don't do that shit. And I, I feel like the most constructive thing for, for those men to do is to just keep an eye out for, for the men that do do that. And uh, hopefully if all of us do that, 
I don't know, maybe we'll we'll spot the next fucking monster. Um and I think it's I think and and the thing is like also Luke talked about it on his podcast and he brought up a good point like every woman has a story about some dirty gross guy doing some fucked up stuff or being creepy or following them home or or assaulting them whether in a major or a minor way not that there is a a minor you know assault is not a minor thing um and uh I, I think that it that sucks and women shouldn't have to deal with that and I suppose the best the best way that we can help this awful thing from never happening again even if it might seem like an impossible task to ensure that no one ever murders a woman ever again or or whatever um, is just keep, I keep an eye out and uh, and say something if you see it I suppose I don't know if, if anything can come from this fucking awful thing I hope it ins- I hope it inspires a lot of a lot of men and, and and women to to if they see something to be like stop that shit or 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 I don't know I don't know I don't have the fucking answers I think it's horrible and it's a real shame that it happened to to such a you know to such a young person and it it it's it's fucked and uh, it's it sucks that women have I feel bad saying that it sucks that women have to deal with that because I know it's like that implies that every man is out there being like, I'm going to be a fucking gross, but it's, I suppose it sucks that that is something that that lives in every woman's mind of, is this guy who I'm passing on the street going to be the fucking monster? It sucks that that thought comes into every chick's mind because that doesn't come into my head. I'm a fucking, I'm a giant man. You know, I walk home at, I walk home from this horrible area filled with racist graffiti and like having four brothels that are probably run by biker gangs and I have my headphones in in the dark in a warehouse area with no no residence and no fucking lights and I'm and I feel safe as fuck um and I, and I would I would say that that just about every every single woman would feel very fucking unsafe in that situation and I think that's that sucks, um, and I don't know what the solution is. I don't know if this if that would change a thing, but I hope that if you listen to this and you and you're a guy, and you and yes, you're probably almost certainly not the that the animal, but if you see the animal or if you see animal like behavior in one of your friends or even a stranger. I, I would hope that you would say something to that person. Or even little shit. Like, I remember I was in... Well, I suppose this isn't a little thing. But I remember I was in... Before my cruise, the week before my cruise, I was coming back from a stand-up gig. And um, I was waiting for the bus. And I heard uh, this girl just screaming at her boyfriend. A girl and a guy in just a massive screaming match... It was near the, um, near the art gallery, but it wasn't on the road. It was like in, in where the art gallery place, where if it was daytime, there'd be lots of people there, but it was nighttime. So there was like no one there. And I just heard this couple fucking screaming at each other. I mean, this huge, like unreasonable yelling match and argument. And it sounded scary. I couldn't see it, but I could hear it. And I was at this bus stop and there was like nine people everyone could hear it every single person could hear it and everyone was looking at each other like oh that sounds fucking bad doesn't it and i and i was like well f- this is fucked i'm and i went up and I, I i followed my fucking ears and i went to 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 where the source was coming from and i went and i fucking i checked on it and i made sure that it was all right and i i was i talked to them and and I, I made sure that that chick was alright. Or that guy, if she was the aggressor. I was like, I, I want to make sure that this fucking situation is alright. Because it sounds like it, it could turn, or if not already, 
uh, into a violent situation. And I went and I... And, and it sucked that I was the only person. You know what I mean? Another, another, and, and I have heaps of these stories where I've intervened in, in, sh not to, not to make myself sound like a hero, but to, to, to demonstrate that you do see this shit. And it's so easy to, to say something. I remember I was in, um, I think I was in Sydney or something. I can't remember where I was. I was in some city. I was on tour. I was walking around the city at night. I think it was, there was there was some festival thing on in the city. So everyone was out in the street. I was walking around by myself and um, <clears throat> there was like a roadworks area. And there was like a whole bunch of wooden walls. And then like a little path for the builders to get into the woodwork. Into the roadwork. Um, and I, I, I walking... I'm walking past this little entryway and I just hear screaming. An another guy and a girl having a giant fucking screaming match. And, um... Uh, there was this... They were just screaming at each other and he had her, like, cornered against the wall. He wasn't touching her, but he was screaming in her face. She was right against the wall and he, like, smashed the wall right near his head. And I was like, well, that's... And she looked scared and I was like, that's not on. So I, f I called the cops... And I was like, I think there's a domestic happening here. And I said where I was. And then I I, uh, I went up to them and I made sure that, hey, you're not fucking alone. I was like, what are, you, what are you doing, man? Calm down. I didn't try to escalate it, but I just let him know that, he's, that he was not doing this without being watched. And then the, um, and then, you know, within like a couple minutes, the police were there. And, and I was on such a fucking busy street man and there were so many people that walked heard the screaming looked at the couple and just did nothing and um and it, it's and and you know that that sucks so maybe that situation that I stopped was not going to turn violent but maybe that guy if he got away with it would be like, oh, I can do whatever I want to women, so fucking... And then he goes down this path where he just gets worse and worse, and then he could kill someone, or, or whatever. I'm not trying to make myself sound like a hero. I'm just trying to... Say, if you see... If you see some... I think the best way to combat this shit happening in the future is if you see something, just say something. And it doesn't mean that all men are fucking evil... We live in a, we live in an amazing place where where there's so little violence compared to what we used to be. Even though the spotlight in the news talks about violence, but but it does still happen. And I think as long as there are there is violence and there is people getting killed and bashed and women getting getting assaulted, we can all fucking work to to keep those the attitudes that foster that violence in check until we re 